everyone, Alexa Dunn here, and today I'm actually going to be talking about some college essay admissions advice in the era of COVID-19. This is not your regularly scheduled programming, but for those of you who are unfamiliar either with me in general or with this aspect of my life, I have been doing pro bono freelance college admissions essay consulting since 2014. I work with underprivileged students in Los Angeles to help them get into college, and I also did two years of private consulting with an essay review company. I'm super passionate about education and helping kids with access to college, just helping kids generally with the very hectic, stressful, elite college admissions atmosphere. Y'all have more pressure on you than any generation had before you, and I understand how nerve-wracking it is. And primarily, this is a writing channel because I am a published young adult author. My next book, The Ivy's Away Thriller, coming out in 2021, is a thriller about competitive college admissions <laughs> that asks the question, would you kill to get into the Ivy League? The answer should be no, by the way. That's what I hope the takeaway is from the book. The point is, this is something I'm really passionate about, and I am currently helping students with their application strategy for the 2021 season. There are all sorts of variables that no group before has had to contend with with college admissions in light of you're doing school from home on Zoom. Are the colleges even having in-person classes right now? Will they run out of money? What about the essay that you should write? Because you've lost a nice chunk of a year of your life where normally you might be having wonderful, fun life experiences that could go into your essays. I'm going to cover all of kind of these points and questions and my personal advice, feelings, predictions, etc. but particularly, I have very specific advice for how to approach the topic of COVID-19 in your college essays and application. So I want to start off with things are still really up in the air. No one knows exactly what is happening or what is going to happen. And the best we can do is take it one step at a time. The best we can do is stick with what we kind of know and then pivot if and as things change. Also very, very important, your number one job right now, yes, obviously going to school, getting through school, whatever that means, but it also is honestly self-care. This is an unprecedented global situation. It is putting undue pressure on everyone, anxiety, stress, etc. And yes, that is on top of a process that's already very stressful, but meaning don't hyper-focus and stress and melt down about, ah, how am I going to get into the college that I want and focus more on what can I do at home that is self-care to calm myself down and feel centered and find joy again. Just don't forget to take care of yourself essentially because otherwise you won't be functional enough to handle any of this anyway. I care about you and I want you to be okay. Speaking of, my advice for freshmen through juniors, current freshmen through juniors is chill out. This is a weird situation, but it will pass and you shouldn't be stressing out right now in this application season when you are not actually applying to college about how this is going to impact your college admissions. Schools are not going to harp on, hmm, your freshman year of the 2020-2021 school year, you didn't do many extracurriculars. No, they're not going to care because they're going to go, oh, that's when everyone had to stay at home because of a global pandemic and everyone was doing Zoom school. You are going to get a free pass for the so-called time on your high school resume. So deep breaths and don't freak out. This also goes for academics. Everyone is going to let some things slide because a lot of people are sliding. Many teachers can't keep up with this or handle these pressures. Many students can't. Online learning is weird and just doesn't work for a lot of people. Do the best that you can and don't freak out. But to that end, some practical advice. You know that self-care I mentioned? Seriously do that, meaning find hobbies you enjoy inside or outside. Outside, that can be done safely and inside that interest you and you have space and time for. This could be all manner of indoors things that maybe you hadn't tried before. Painting or crafting or makeup or baking, maybe in your safe, socially isolated backyard. You take up archery. I don't know. Think about that thing that you've never had time to do that 
is something you can focus on that's going to kind of center you and invest in those activities because those can essentially become your extracurricular activities down the line. It's not about proving how you turned lemons into lemonade during COVID. That's always going to come across a little try hard, but that doesn't mean that you can't turn lemons into lemonade during COVID within reason. If there are things you enjoy that are going to center you in this stressful time, three years from now when you're applying, two years, one year, yeah, it could be something nice that would go on your application or even contribute to an essay. Though, asterisk, as I mentioned, I have feelings about writing about COVID that I am coming to later. Also advice for any students is follow the lead from your school on extracurricular activities and whether or not they can be made virtual, but also look for opportunities to do that yourself. You could take the lead on your favorite activity, let's say it's debate or even theater, and find ways to do it through self-isolation, ways to do it safely during this weird time. Again, so that you find joy in things, but also there are some workarounds for some activities to have some semblance of normalcy of those ECs. Now on to my lovely darling rising senior. So you've just started your senior year. You might have already had some deadlines from your teachers about writing essays or turning in school lists, and you're already like, they're acting like everything's normal, but everything isn't normal. Yes. So as I mentioned, it's normal until it's not normal. So you should just like take it in baby steps and be prepared for weird changes. And that includes, I think every current senior should plan a regular set of applications. You should apply as you would have applied with a couple of caveats. However, be open to the idea of taking a gap year. You want to make sure that you have a college to go to in the event that that isn't the smart choice. But if we do come to spring and things are really kind of weird with colleges, maybe some of them don't have enough spaces because of deferrals from this school year to next year. Maybe they didn't have sufficient financial aid. Maybe this shouldn't still be raging in a year, but let's say there are still some colleges who have virtual school. You could make the decision to take a gap year as some students have this year because why would you pay $70,000 a year for a school doing Zoom? Shade. The point is proceed as normal, but be open to contingency plans, which would be deferring mission for a year, taking a gap year, etc. Now, is all of this going to make it easier or harder to get into schools? And there are lots of different schools of thought. I'm not even sure what I think. And I think the answer is in some cases, both. I think that many schools are going to actually be quite desperate for people to matriculate because of this whole situation. The 2020 classes are probably lower than they might otherwise be because of people taking gap years, especially those who didn't defer. Now, those who did defer, of course, are going to add to the class. And so some of the classes are going to be fuller than they might have otherwise been. But I think at some schools, it's, it's really just going to depend on what percentage of incoming students deferred versus what percentage just went like, I'm, I'm just going to take a year off and apply all over again next year. It's also honestly going to be easier in some cases. This is just some real talk that I don't say to stress out anyone who needs financial aid. Raise your hand if you needed financial aid to attend college. I needed a scholarship. Some institutions are going to be looking for full pay students. So if you are honestly a full pay student, that can give you an edge at certain schools that are going to be strapped for cash. And that's the thing about strategy, by the way. Some schools are rich as dirt, and so it's probably really not gonna impact them as much financially. Continue to apply to those as normal because you're still gonna have the same equal shot at financial aid and merit aid, et cetera, at those schools. Some only do need based aid and don't have any merit. Those rules have not changed, but some of the smaller schools who used to be very good schools for merit aid, I strongly suspect their budgets are going to be much, much lower. So as I have been advising students on their strategy this year, there are some schools I used to recommend as a matter of course, and now I'm far less confident that they're going to be handing out as many merit scholarships, and I'm steering those students toward schools that have Hardier endowments, essentially. That's kind of the up in the air thing where no one is sure how it's gonna fall financially for schools. I do think we're gonna see a ton of schools closing over the next year or so because of money problems, mostly smaller schools, not the T 
4050 that we all know of, but I do suspect we're gonna see a wave of college closures, but we're not there yet, so don't stress. And for the most part, knock on wood, I don't think state schools are gonna have problems, though we might see some cases where states close smaller satellite campuses and consolidate resources. So what this means, my poor, poor seniors, is there has never been a more important time to have very frank conversations with your parents about money. I know that is your least favorite thing. It is the most awkward thing that you have to do, but it's more important than ever because, well, also your parents' financial situation may have changed over the last six months, in some cases, catastrophically so. So speaking to those of you who didn't have to worry about money for college before, and now you do, deep breaths. I know it's very, very scary, but there are all sorts of strategies to employ for chasing aid essentially at schools. I won't go into detail here on that, but there are resources for you on the internet. Uh, the dreaded College Confidential, honestly, the financial aid forums have always been very useful, even though it's a little bit intense. Applying to college on, on Reddit has some good stuff as well. And there are other resources that I will pop down below. That could also honestly be another reason to take a gap year, as I mentioned, because if a year would make a difference in your parents recovering their financial footing with the global crisis, it could be worth waiting. But regardless, you have to ask, essentially ask your parents, do I have a college fund? If I don't have a college fund, how much can you realistically afford a year? And secondarily, would you be willing to take out a Parent PLUS loan? You need to ask some things like, do we have surprise assets that are going to throw off what I might get from a school because of the CSS profiles? In short, the FAFSA is federal financial aid, and that's going to be your custodial parents' income, and it's going to come from all their tax documents. It's not going to count assets or non-custodial parents. The CSS profile, which the majority of private schools use, is a whole other ballgame. It's going to be income and assets, non-liquid assets, for both of your parents, regardless of marital status or whether you've seen your other parent in however many years. It's very, very hard to get an exemption for a non-custodial parent and so there's all sorts of financial stuff there and you have to actually understand the full picture of how things are working so for example if you have a single parent if your parent knows where the other parent is and they have money they are going to impact you financially at any school that takes the CSS profile finances could be a whole other video but the point is you have to have very frank conversations with your parents because now more than ever everyone's financial situation has kind of changed. I also suspect this is kind of a moving target kind of thing. The FAFSA link hasn't dropped, but I suspect that we're gonna see a lot of like waivers or some kind of system where people can talk about current hardship because your FAFSA is gonna be based on the previous year's income tax, but everyone's finances got hit this year, 2020. So there are likely going to be mechanisms for essentially providing additional information to any schools because they're gonna wanna use the 2019 tax from your parents to determine your financial need and if there's been a situation change you're gonna have to let the schools know. So just bear that in mind. So next is the SATs, ACTs, and y'all know that's a garbage pile that's on fire right now. So most states have been canceled. They continue to be canceled. It's touch and go depending on your location. But thankfully, most schools have decided to not be evil this year. And most schools are now SAT, ACT test optional. Um, I'm not a fan of standardized testing. And this is really, really great news. I mean, pros and cons. So if you have a great SAT, ACT score that already exists, you might as well submit it. It's going to be an extra data point in your favor. Otherwise, cry COVID. Honestly, uh, there's never been a better opportunity at a ton of schools to go in just with your GPA and not have to provide your standardized test scores. I think it's going to be really interesting in terms of potentially leveling the playing field at a lot of places because success on standardized test scores is traditionally attached to privilege and wealth. So it's going to be really interesting. And I will pop a link down below of the current list of schools who are test optional this year and some of them next year due to the global crisis situation. Okay, it's time for essays. The rest of this video is essays. It's all about essays. So my number one warning is to be super, super, super careful about writing about COVID. And whenever humanly possible, I don't think you should write your essay on COVID-19. Why? So I am an old 
I was a senior in high school when September 11 happened. It was a watershed historical moment that deeply impacted every American. And I guarantee you, an overwhelming majority of students with their essays on it uh, to get into college. Admissions officers, they become overwhelmed with repetitive topics on a good day, in a good year, but in particular, trauma-based events that everyone writes about. You have to remember that the admissions officers are also stressed and overwhelmed and maybe struggling with anxiety and all sorts of stuff, and they don't want to read thousands and thousands and thousands of essays that remind them of how horrible everything is. So my advice is, if at all possible, don't write about COVID-19. Be the fresh breath of air. Be the student who writes about something else. Honestly, bonus points if you write something entertaining that is going to make them smile. I am convinced one of the things that gave me an edge in college admissions in 2001 is that I did not write about September 11. I wanted to, like every other student in my class. I tried to write a few drafts of that essay too, and I found what you are likely going to find with COVID-19, depending on your circumstances. When you are fresh in a trauma, an emotional trauma, it is almost impossible to write about it with appropriate distance, with appropriate emotional <laughs> response. You're either going to tend toward mellow drama or you're going to be really negative and bitter and they just don't read well. It's a rare person who can write well about trauma. Generally trauma is difficult to write about. My September 11 essays just weren't working, they felt aimless and like trite, and so I wrote something that was actually specific and personal to me. I wrote about being a high school foreign exchange student to Germany, no regrets. That's what I should have been writing all along, but I mean September 11 happened like my third week of senior year, uh, two weeks before my essay was due to my English teacher, so that was a matter of timing. With COVID specifically, I worry about you having what I call emotional tunnel vision, that you're going to narrow in on a specific emotional emotion, whether that be depression, anger, anxiety, or you could end up being myopically narcissistic. This topic really, really concerns me for students because without meaning to, you could come across honestly as kind of a jerk because suffering is relative and no one wins when you play the oppression Olympics, by the way. Um, but meaning if you're complaining because you couldn't play sports, I'm not saying that wouldn't be a good essay, but it's how you write it, if that makes sense. But meaning if you're whining about it and being dismissive of people dying, it's just not going to be a good look. Generally speaking, my tip for you, by the way, on college admissions essays and the Common App specifically, I hate the failure prompt a lot because it, the prompt is a lie. It's there to trick students. They think, oh, I have to write about something bad that happened to me. I have to write about failure. That essay is actually about success. They actually want to know how you turned something bad into something good while demonstrating the better aspects of your character. So if you choose to write about COVID, you have to think along those lines. It's not about complaining about something that you didn't get to do or something bad that happened. It's talking about the good things that came out of something and kind of how you handled it. An example I got from someone else recently, a student had their fancy internship canceled. It was really devastating. They didn't get to do this thing they really wanted to do that they had won for themselves. And also all their ECs were canceled. Very high flying student. But a side effect of this is that they suddenly got to spend a lot of time with their parents. Their parents were very busy working professionals, but now they were all home all the time. And the student started paying attention to what his parents did. And it turned out they had a really interesting job in the STEM fields, and he got very interested in what they do, kind of reading up on what they do, performing some experiments himself. And so he turned a negative into a positive, and it became an essay on this new field that is his parents' field, getting to know his parents, that now he's really interested in. That is turning a negative into a positive. It's also not specifically about 
COVID, it's kind of, it's, it, that is turning lemons in, into lemony. Like that's a good approach in my opinion. Now this also that I'm talking about your Common App essay, by the way, your main essay. There's also a space on the Common App to say if you've been impacted by COVID and if you have been significantly impacted by COVID, especially academically, definitely use that space, but that's not a personal essay. That should be straightforward and fact-based, just like the additional information section of the application, which has always been there for when you have extenuating circumstances that you need the admissions officers to know. Don't be afraid to use that space where relevant. I'm just talking about the personal essay and kind of just being very, very careful with COVID. But let's talk about when you do want to write about COVID-19 in your essay, some kind of best practices and tips and tricks. First of all, it's totally okay to do exploratory writing on the topic because you have big feelings, which you should have, because this is bonkers, and you want to get them out. Write that down, do that free writing, write that test essay. I mean, as I mentioned, I wrote multiple very bad essays about September 11, which ultimately I just needed to get my feelings out on paper, apparently. You can write it, doesn't mean you have to submit it. I don't think it's wasted time to do that, those writing exercises. And now not an exhaustive list, but some ideas of ways that you could approach COVID-19 that would be specific to you and could be well executed. If you had to step up in your family in a brand new way, you can write about the shift in your dynamics, your new role. You want to think about how you're going to demonstrate, well, something personal, what your life was like versus what it's like now, empathy, thoughtfulness, openness, uh, how you respond to challenges. That's what you want your essay to get across. This said, I do think this is going to be the most common approach to this essay topic, in fairness, because it's one of the ones that's gonna work, the comparative approach of before life was this, now it's this, and look at the positive. It's, it's a way that works, but it might be done by a lot of people. Next is that advice I gave you about taking up a new hobby. You could write an essay on that. That could actually be really, really interesting. COVID then becomes the background of something else. Like in the example I just gave of that student, another example is if this whole crisis has led you to a new passion, a new career direction. He discovered more about what his parents do and discovered a passion for it. Maybe you want to go into global health or politics now. There are all sorts of perfectly relevant ways that this might have stirred a fire in you and inspired you to do something different now. And that should be reflected in your college applications and your essays. A lot of us are different people now. So it's not about suppressing that, but being smart about how you acknowledge it. Now, on to the big one. <laughs> if you yourself had COVID-19 and survived, or if someone you know, someone you were close to, passed away. So this is true all the time. This is another kind of trauma essay, the grief essay. Grief essays are really, really, really difficult to write because grief is weird. And uh, when you're very, very close to grief, as I mentioned, uh, sometimes you're in the emotional tunnel and it's just not possible to write a great admissions essay. It's, it's almost, it feels almost wrong to think about packaging uh, trauma and grief into a perfect admissions essay. Like I, I, it's, it's awkward, isn't it? And I'm someone, mind you, an adult, I lost my parent last year, not to COVID, to cancer. But I've thought a lot about how one, how one approaches this topic. And I do think it's possible. However, you have to be careful. A lot of people don't manage death well. They don't manage the concept of it. They're, it triggers every fear and vulnerability they have. Now, if you've lost someone, that's really not your problem. I feel that feeling. That's on them, not on you. You are allowed to feel your feelings, process your grief any way you want. But especially with recent uh, trauma and grief, just be careful because you don't owe them those feelings about yourself. You could just as easily, if you want to, put in the additional information section about COVID that someone close to you passed away, a close relative, like parents, siblings, uncles, aunts, grandparents, etc. You don't have to bleed for them is what I'm meaning to say. That said, you should not feel obligated to write about it, but also, a major death represents a sea change in your life. It is who you are now as a person. You are a brand new person and you want to write about that. 
So rely on your support networks. You should have a support network anyway. I really hope you have support networks. Kind of talk things out with them. Re rely on them for support while you're writing. Take it in bursts. The few times I've written about my mother since she died, I was overwhelmed. Even talking about her on video does it to me. Like you're, you're probably going to cry. And so allow yourself grace. <laughs> Take it in chunks. You probably can't sit down and write an entire essay about this sea change death. Um, but you could write a paragraph here and there. But if it is too overwhelming, free pass. You don't have to write about it in that way. Share it with other people get their advice, proofread it. Don't feel obligated to overwhelmingly focus on the positive, but also remember that personal essays, you want to give them a window into who you are as a person. You want to give them a window into your life. And so this is why I think writing about grief is so hard because it's such a callous demand. Just don't forget to also make it about you. It's not just memorializing someone who you love, even though that's a part of it. It's also remembering to show them a piece of yourself. It's so tough. I clearly don't have definitive answers. Uh, just definitely get help. Uh, rely on supports if you are going to cover that as a topic, but also free pass if you don't want to. So now a note within this, if you don't have someone very close to you who died, meaning if the person you know who died is not in your immediate circle, there's something called ring theory, circle theory. It's a thing about grief. Uh, the people at the center of the ring, so they are the closest to the person who died, they get to be the most emotional and have the biggest reaction and everyone outside of that ring should be comforting in instead of demanding comfort out, if that makes sense. So meaning be wary of writing a death essay about someone who you're not demonstrably or obviously close to. Without meaning to, you could come across as callous and kind of capitalizing on someone's death for your essay. I hate even saying that, but just be very, very, very careful about how you write about death and grief, honestly. It's a it's a really tricky thing to write about and like we're in the center of that storm. It's, it's the difference between your father dying and you write an essay and your best friend's dad died and you're writing the essay about your best friend's dad. That might be a little navel gazy, even though it may have personally impacted you, if that makes sense. So I will close on a couple of what I call other worries <laughs> on my outline. These are non-essay specific. So performance-based audition. So any discipline where normally you would be auditioning in December and January for like theater and music and so on, it's touch and go. We don't know what's going on. I say apply as normal and take it from there, honestly. And if you have to take a gap year, but I think schools are trying to accommodate audition-based majors as much as possible, either through virtual auditions or in person if we're able to by that time. Counselor, teacher recs, and interviews. So I just ask you to allow a bit of grace for your teachers and your counselors. They are as stressed as you are. Yeah, they're fancy adults, but you don't know how well they're adulting right now. And so I suspect there's probably gonna be delays on getting recommendations. Basically, as much as you're stressed, imagine they're stressed. And when you go requesting things or following up on things, just be kind of as kind as possible. Try not to be too, too demanding, try not to nag. Ultimately, recommendations are important, but they are not the most important part of your application. So don't stress too much if you're not gonna get the perfect recommendation due to extenuating circumstance because of the global situation. Similarly with interviews, they rarely move the needle on college admissions. I know there's this whole culture of, I have to get my interview for Harvard and be amazing. They're usually alumni interviews. And the only thing that would really make an impact is if they hate you with the passion of a thousand sons and they say that you're like a horrible human being, that might impact your admission. But even then, most alumni interviewers that I've heard or talked to myself say like, even if they adore you and think you're amazing, it rarely is the deciding factor in you getting into a school. So don't stress out about interviews, whether you can do them or not this cycle. Of course, in-person interviews are probably mostly not going to happen. There'll probably be Zoom interviews and such, but just 
I wouldn't stress because it's just not the most important part of your application anyway. So in conclusion, everything's weird. It's okay if you're stressed. Proceed as normal within reason and just kind of roll with the punches as things change. And most of all, if at all humanly possible, do not write about COVID-19 in your essay. <laughs> Let me know down below if you have any questions about this. I will try to answer them. And if you guys are interested, let me know. I can do an essay basics kind of video. I do have a lot of advice about how to write a great college admissions essay. I've worked with dozens and dozens of kids over the years who have gone to a lot of really fantastic schools, and I really enjoy helping with essays in particular. Give this video a thumbs up and I will make more college admissions related videos on this channel. And if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and do that. I post new videos two to three times a week. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching and good luck with college applications.